Hi all, so we're back to doing excerpts from Bollywood on the Bend. Uh, Bollywood on the Bend will hopefully one day inspire a film or a web series. That is my dearest wish uh, because to me a story like this which incorporates insights from our beautiful culture and our beautiful spiritual icons is much needed. It's a um, thirst that we live with but we're living in that with that thirst without acknowledging it. Uh, and the rest of the world has acknowledged it, which is why India is becoming such a, and has always been such a spiritualism market. You know, you'll find all kinds of people from around the world in Benares and Ganeshpuri and the Himalayas, all looking for deeper answers to the deeper questions around life. So when I share these excerpts for you, I also hope to be doing you a service and I also hope to be re-fertilizing your imaginations. So let's move with today's excerpt because of Diwali is about Goddess Lakshmi and it's Tamanna the writer who in, uh, she's always tended to attract attention from less conventional deities like Ma Kali or Saraswati or Brahma, Mahadev. But finally, at the end of the book, when she's arriving at a happy place in her relationship, which is going to end up in marriage, she encounters Goddess Lakshmi. Because Goddess Lakshmi represents the secrality of physical union, fertility, family, institutions, uh, legal rules and, you know, following systems, uh, treating your guests with a lot of respect and love. So obviously, at that stage of her life, it is Lakshmi who becomes very, very potent and relevant. So we start with her seeing the holographic manifestation of the goddess Lakshmi standing on her vintage lotus. Because her complexion is of the same delicate pink, she, because she has lotuses in orbit around her and lotuses as her jewelry, it is easy to see why she is known as the Padma Lakshmi or Kamala Lakshmi. It is also easy to understand how tantric mandalas with lotuses represent an expanding universe imbued with fertile power. If she squints, the mana can also see the soft outline of baby elephants. Their trunks playfully gushing streams of water which seem to flow right into the goddess. In olden days, elephants were seen as flying clouds that brought an abundance of rain when in the mood to do so. It was believed that one day their antics angered a sage who cursed them and made them earthbound, weighty creatures. But elephants were still loved by man because they were thought to attract their celestial counterparts, the rotund white clouds. Water was synonymous with life and wealth as it generated harvests. Right now, as the manna watches, water from these baby elephants falls over and into the goddess, making it seem like they are performing the Hindu Abhishek ritual. The rasa of creation herself, Sri Lakshmi, is radiant. And in that radiance, the resplendent gold and silver jewelry seems a continuous part of her lustrous, fiery persona. Flowers continuously pour over her being, as if reflecting a 24-7 act of worship. I am the goddess of domestic bliss, family, wealth, stability, auspiciousness in every possible way. She beams at the manna. You, my dear, as a writer, have not spent too much time worshipping me. And hence, you have received darshans by the more unconventional deities like Ma Saraswati, Ma Kali, the great Mahadeva, his son Lord Ganesha, all so beautiful but so complex compared to me. Tamanna, aware that no one else can see this vision, nods subtly and continues to look up pretending that she is looking at the hunter's belt. You know, I am the Radha that Lord Krishna loved. My entire life's dream was love. In the underwater Vaikuntha realms, 
I sit at my Lord Narayana's feet, content to be his shadow, submissive and yet the essence of his peace and prosperity. But should anyone dare to kick him in the heart where I reside, then I would leave his side, which I did, which is why the Balaji Tirupati temple came into being, because a sage kicked him in the heart, offended me, I abandoned Lord Vishnu, and without me, Lord Vishnu is bankrupt, so he had to be reincarnated when I was born on earth, he had to find me, he had this temple built, and he had to borrow money from the gods, which today all of us keep, whenever we visit the Tirupati Mandir, we sacrifice hair, we sacrifice wealth, that is him paying his debt to the gods because when he finally found Lakshmi on earth, he married her, but he took money from the heavens. Today, says Goddess Lakshmi, a lot of brides are older than their grooms. That too is my wish. I now have... Sorry about that, it jumped a bit. I now have a direct channel to the women of the world. I bless them with their own wealth and glory and they no longer need grooms who can support them. Hence, there is no need technically unless they want to go into marriage where double incomes obviously help. But what matters in today's marriage is that they be true friends to one another. In a happy marriage today, what you find is communication and emotion. That is the essence. I have also done another miraculous thing for your era. You will see women of great power and energy well over their 40s. I represent the force of fertility too. You know that in the Deccan and in Orissa I am worshipped as manure because cow dung brings rich harvests. Well, in the woman's body, I am the manure of estrogen and progesterone. And today because the medical world knows how to play with progesterone and estrogen, which are the fertility hormones, we have liberated women from the biological clock and she can choose to now be pregnant at any age of her life. That too is my miracle. If women's wisdom, her love for nature, her moral purity is to infiltrate the world's fabric, she needs more time to invest in her working life and then nature has traditionally given her a clock which I have now softened and eliminated. So if my blessings are upon a woman, she will be fertile, both physically and mentally, and she will have an abundance of energy. It is Saraswati who will give her artistic inspiration, but it is I who will reward her with wealth and sexual attractiveness. Provided, of course, that she is clean of heart and soul, has a moderate diet and an exercise plan. Please convey this to your generation Tamanna, Tell them not to be slaves to nature's old clocks. I am sacking the bio clock setter in heaven as we speak. His time is over. I will, says Tamanna, cannot stop staring into space while the others around her do not see this manifestation. And that is the end of her encounter with the goddess Lakshmi. It is a short excerpt but a very powerful one. And I felt very inspired by the grace of this beautiful, generous goddess. To attract Lakshmi, let's all learn to be generous. Let's all learn to be forgiving. Let's all learn to travel positively. Travel with positivity, positive energy. And cleanliness is next to goddessliness. So one of the biggest agendas right now would be to declutter at the spiritual level, physical level, detox and declutter your homes and just keep everything as clean and simple as you can. Over to you for another Happy Diwali excerpt. Uh, this is me signing off. Bye.